Okay, so here are our four theories. We just talked about this sun and planets form from the same gas at the yep. same time, form for different gases and come together later. The sun blows the thing out, or there's a passing star that wrenches some stuff out of the sun. Yep. So how are we going to tell which of these is true? So there's one big clue that we can start with, and again, this is something that we talk quite a bit at the STARS course, so that is the composition of the sun. What are the elements and what are the ratios of the sun? And we can compare that to what the composition and ratios are of the other things in the solar system. That's right. Now, we know the composition of the sun, again, we talked about this in the STARS course, by spectroscopy. Yep. We take the light from the sun, divide it up into its component wavelengths, and all these dips come from different elements, and by counting them all and measuring how deep they are, uh, we can work out what the sun is made of. Yep. Now, for the planets, it's much harder. For the Earth, we can certainly measure what the surface layers of the Earth are made out of, because yep. it varies from place to place. That's right. From the middle of an iron mine, it's going to be more iron than in the middle of a copper mine, for example. Yep. Uh, but you can kind of average that. It's tr tricky because a lot of the iron in our Earth has sunk to the middle. Yes. Um, but you can try and estimate how much of that. But the best place to do it is actually some small meteorites called carbonaceous chondrites, because yes. these seem to be the um, original stuff all mixed up. That's hasn't, right. Hasn't, one hasn't sunk to the bottom or something else. And, is, and we use this in the STARS course to figure out how old the Sun and the Earth were. And what we didn't find is here is the abundance of all the different elements in the Sun. Yep. Um, and you can see hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, iron, and so on, all the way down with a sort of sawtooth pattern. And again, we talked a lot about this in the STARS course. This all comes out of the nuclear reactions yep. in the Sun and also the um, nuclear reactions in the stars and supernovae and other exploding things that made the sun. And this is also, we should remind people, this is the log scale. So the hydrogen is multiple, multiple times bigger than even helium and way more than lithium yeah. and even iron. So it is misleading because it looks like hydrogen is only a little bit more than helium and oxygen. But if we plot it on a linear scale rather than a log scale, well, let's first of all look at the, um, this is for the sun. Yep. But we can compare the sun to the composition of the planets, or okay. in this case we'll take a, a small carbonaceous chondrite yep. meteorite as, as representative of what the average composition of the planets are. Yep. And here's a plot. So here we've got the uh, abundance of all the different elements uh, in a uh, um, meteorite, yep. um, and it's very similar in the Earth and Mars. We haven't really got samples of anywhere else yet, but as far as we know it's similar to all the other planets. Yep. And up here is the element uh, composition in the Sun. Okay, and, and we're clearly seeing that most of them are essentially on a pretty straight line yeah there's a very tight yeah. correlation here for most elements that they i mean uh, even even the iron that popped out was actually quite a lot in the previous plot is still pretty much spot on here same with silicon and magnesium but carbon and oxygen and nitrogen are a little bit higher yes, let's look at the ones that are way off there's yeah. only one that's at the bottom which is lithium. more common in the asteroids than in the sun yep. and that's lithium and this is fairly well understood because lithium is very fragile and gets destroyed in the sun by yep. nuclear reactions then you've got all these gases like krypton, xenon, argon, neon, helium. Yep. Now these are all inert gases. That's right. They're not going to hang around on a planet or a meteorite. They're just going to float away. They don't, they don't form compounds with anything. So it's kind of expected that they will just... Uh, they might have been there when the meteorite formed, but they're not going to turn into rocks. You can't combine neon with anything to make an, a Ex nice rocky element. So essentially it's happy to be by itself and kind of goes off by itself. Yeah. Um, likewise, hydrogen. I mean, it's only the most massive planet like Jupiter can actually trap hydrogen. It can escape from the gravity of anything else. Yep. Um, so probably all these things that up at the top are basically gases, which probably were there when the planets formed and got blown away. Okay. But anything that can form something solid is pretty much... On a, on a straight line. Okay. All right. So so we're still seeing that from the composition in a representative sample of our solar system, it for the most part minus the gases that got blown away is spot on with what the sun is. Yes. So this seems to suggest that the uh, the, the the sun and the planets formed from the same gas cloud. Yeah, because this was important because there was one idea that they formed from different clouds. Yes, so if you look back at our theories, if the sun and planets form from the same gas cloud at the same time, then yep. tick. Yep. But if they form differently and came together, you'd have to have <laughs> both the primordial gas clouds having the same abundance of all those elements. Yeah. And we can actually measure the elements in a lot of gas clouds, and they're not all the same. So, so we do know that all, not all gas clouds are created equal. It basically depends what supernova yep. went off just before and enriched them with heavy elements. And the different types of supernovae and exploding stars produce different ratios of elements. So look at the different gas clouds and the different stars around the galaxy. They've all got subtly different. I mean, they're all mostly hydrogen and helium, yep. and they've all got roughly the same elements. But the details differ quite a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, to get this kind of perfect of a fit would be 
exceptionally, exceptionally rare. That's right. So really, the sun and planets form from different gas clouds and come together later. Yeah. It's not going to work. It would have to be an amazing fluke to have another gas cloud that it was enriched by all the same yeah, that's right. at the same rate. Um, <coughs> sun explodes and things like that. Well, that's going to be OK because it, it's... That's formed cool. from the sun. It should be the same yeah. stuff. Passing star tears the gas up. Well, if it just tore the gas out of the sun, then that would give the same stuff. But you're probably going to get some gas torn out of the other star, depending on what the other star is and how close it came and so on. So kind of maybe like it could happen, but not all the time? Yes, yeah, so I'll give that one a question. Okay. Mark. It's not all very right. clear.